Well, good morning. It is Friday, July 21st. We are here with another pre-market call of the Educator to Trader crew. What the crew that's making money every day crew? The crew that's getting it done in the market crew? Yes. Yes, that's who we with. That's who you who you with. Who you with? That's who we with. Not with, because that wouldn't make the song as good. You have to say who you with. Who you with? <laughs> Miss Barbara, what's your question? What's your question this morning? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, when my PDT hat closed yesterday, I know there has to be some consequence behind this, but I wanted to run it by the, the mathematical brain. <laughs> um, I just, I did it. I think it was a CCSP. Anyway, long story short, I think it could be on either side. Okay, but at Taking a strike at in the money, in the money, mm -hmm. 4.75, because I went on to click the button just to see. Okay. And it said my max loss. No, this was in the money. Yeah, it was in the money. It said my max loss would have been $25. Right. What's the consequences behind that? Because the strike was 4.75. Nothing. Really? Mm -mm, nothing. There's no consequence behind that. So the thing is, when you got both sides of that PDT hack, Whatever the other side is, those two things are working together. Um, no, this is after they've closed. If I just going in for a single, if I'm just going in for a single um, credit spread or put credit spread, yeah. I yeah. just clicked. I just clicked on the um, just one side of that. Yeah. And now, it was if, you had, if you're picking four point seven five, that tr that strike is in the money because there's no way to be. Yes, at it's in the money. In it's the in the so money. The, 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 and it said max loss would have been $25. It is. I mean, yeah. So when the, they give you four, they'll, yeah, they give you, basically, they'll give you four, $475. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, they're going to take 500 Because they take it the 475 back. I mean, the, because the max, the trade is worth $500. Right. Gave you four seventy five. If you end up with max loss, the max loss is twenty five dollars of your money because they're gonna take the four seventy five back and the twenty five more dollars. That's the part right there. They're gonna take back that four seventy five. I knew there was a consequence in there somewhere. That's why I was like, let me let me run this back because I'm like, yeah. why are we running around like this? Right. Hold on. Right. 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 <laughs> so they're gonna take five hundred dollars. They're going to, uh, you know, if it's a max loss, they're going to take $500. It's just that they gave you 475 of it already. So when they take it back, they're going to take their money back plus 25 more of your money. Gotcha. I knew it had to be a reason yeah, behind it. That's how that goes. Thank you. <laughs> so your max loss is $25 because they gave you the 475 already. All right. There we go. However, um, Barbara, I must say that I do appreciate your diligence in checking. Huh? I did. I did click on those buttons. I was just like, hold on. Let me I just appreciate do this. that. Keeping us I, informed. I'm live. Look, I'm live. Let me go in there. I'm like, $25. Max loss. Please. What? Hold on. That's, <laughs> that's right. To keep a brother from making a mistake. I heard that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how that goes. That's definitely how that goes. Coolie, coolie. Well, my, 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 um, we've had a few little interesting things happen in the market. Let me, I did see this morning that, um, let me share my screen, that um, <clears throat> Amazon has pushed back their earnings reporting. So the earnings whispers people, you know, EPS whispers, they said um, it doesn't necessarily that they won't you know, that they won't meet their earnings or whatever, but what it is is a red flag. Gen you know, you, nobody would want to delay earnings if they were, if they're good, right? If earnings are good, you're not trying to delay good earnings. You're really maybe delaying um, ones that are maybe not so good. So it says is what he said was, here we go. Um, I'm going to open the tweet up so you can, so I can read exactly what was said. I don't want to necessarily be um saying it in a way that's not accurate so he said it doesn't mean that they will disappoint but it is a red flag 
for Amazon. They're doing it on Thursday, August the 3rd. It says this is this is later than the company has reported in the past five years and is a warning that results could be disappointing. Okay. So they're pushing it back to from where they normally would report. Um, yeah. So just, I mean, uh, the, so for those of us who trade, those of us, you who trade Amazon and trade it for earnings, because we will be waiting on them earnings, play, especially with the bigger movers like Amazons and the Microsofts and the NVIDIAs, they wait for those, but they're going to do it on August the 3rd instead of whenever they were supposed to do it before. Not sure when they were set to do it, but they're going to do it later. Gonna do it later than they said. All right, looking at finance, Yahoo stock future signal recovery for techs. Another Dow win. FTC backs down on the Microsoft Activision merger. Amex keeps fiscal year profit forecast unchanged, and the shares fall. Um, doo -doo -doo, crypto stuff over American Airlines, United Airlines report earnings beats. They all beat earnings. Mm -hmm. Johnson and Johnson here. Musk says we're doing a lot of in, we're using a lot of Nvidia hardware. Okay. Fed launches what? Fed launches new payment system that lets you send money in seconds. Okay. What payments for what? You for like taxes and stuff? I mean, you you can send tax money immediately now. But for anything, it's going to be like Zelle. You know how Zelle. Oh, yeah. yeah they trying to catch up with crypto and small contracts. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, this is one step closer to them having a a, a centralized coin. Mm. The same same thing they didn't want to have because somebody right. had to keep up with it. Now it's like, oh, that's not really a bad idea. Let's make us one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Too much they money moving them. over there. They got to get in on the game. They worry. Because listen, if we go to decentralized crypto, if that becomes a way of life, there's no way for the government to be taxing all that. And that's what their biggest thing is. Where are we going to pull our tax money from if folks can move money around without coming through our venues? Yeah. You can't yeah. beat them, join them. Well, or try at least, but you got to, you can't, the Fed be the, you know, government be too far behind the ball. By the time they decide they on board, shoot, people already off the ship and onto another one. Already on to something else. All righty. So um, pre-market this morning, Dow is up 0.09%. S&P futures, sorry, Dow futures. S&P futures is up 0.34%, NASDAQ futures up 0.59%, oil is up 1.4%, and the 10-year bonds are down 0.027%. Stock futures are higher after the Dow registers the longest winning streak since 2017. Traders are wondering if now is the time for a summer market correction, because usually, remember it used to be that you would um, buy in May and go away or something like that? It was yeah, yeah, that was the statement to just go buy in May and go away. But um, I don't know if you could. This market ain't one of them go away type of markets. You need to stay engaged. Um, Asian markets are mixed as Japan's inflation rises slightly in June. They've got a mixed bag there. ASX is down 0.15, Nikkei down 0.57, Kospi's up 0.37, and Hang Seng up 0.78. Shanghai's down 0.06. European markets, also a bit of a mixed bag. The DAX is down 0.54. FTSE's up 0.21. CAC up 0.15. FTSE MIB up 0.08. Stock 600 down 0.05%. European markets are flat as traders react to earnings. Look ahead to the Spanish election. Ooh, the Spanish. White House secures voluntary pledges from Microsoft and Google to ensure that AI tools are secure Right. Right. Well, I think what we're going to get later, like even with remember when Facebook ran into the issues where the people were Facebook, you know, they've been doing this, but they were they pull your data and use it for all these different things in order to really like, I won't say mind manipulate, but to put things in front of you that are going to move you to what they want you to be doing. I'm thinking we're going to find out and we didn't find out about that stuff in Facebook as a private company until somebody decided to whistleblow and then you're like, what, y'all been doing that all this time? Same thing's probably going to happen with Microsoft and NVIDIA and those guys and Google. And we're going to be like, 
y'all been doing stuff wrong or some it's come some something has gotten out of hand like in the movies and then we're gonna come out going we're so sorry we just we tried to contain it <laughs> but we didn't we couldn't contain it I'm telling y'all right now the genie is out the bottle on all of this yeah there's there's there is there's no I ain't trying to sound like a doomsday person but there's no reversing this no, you, you, you don't, you know, you don't give, you don't load all of that data into a machine and start asking it questions. And then while that's happening, you got other companies that's trying to advance that. Dude, this, you know, I ain't saying that the machine is going to become self-aware, but I am saying that human beings don't know how to act with new technology. So if the machines ain't doing something to us, other people with, you know, the technology will. Right. I mean, you do want the whole purpose. I mean, they want these machines to learn, which is why you know, Chat GPT came out and said it was, you know, two years behind in data. But even though they released it, the plan was that it would continue to learn so that it won't stay at that place. It's going to continue to learn and move forward. All these other AI, I mean, a lot of them are based on Chat GPT anyway, but they're all set and programmed to be learning machines. You know what I'm saying? They're not set to be, I mean, this is the stuff that's really happening like, in the movies, we my husband wanted to watch Megan the other day. The movie, I'm not sure if y'all ever saw the movie Megan with the little doll, the AI doll partner friend that the girl created and her niece ended up using. And again, Megan got it, she kept learning and got a mind of her own. And she was like, ah, You're not putting me back in a box, <laughs> you took me out the box and gave me life and made me new. I, you're not putting me back in the box. So she used all of her learning to continue to do what she wanted to do. The doll, you know, and the, yeah, that's a movie, but that stuff ain't too far from real life. Have you have you seen uh, the clips from that? I guess it's the world's most advanced robot. Mm -mm. Um, I think it's in Asia, and they'd be asking it questions. Dude, when I tell you, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is a done deal. <laughs> this 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 is a done deal. Meet meet your new masters, everybody. This is a this is a done deal. That I mean, it was asking the questions like, do you think you know? Do you think that uh, robots will you know become self? They asking of those kind of questions, and that robot, the way it the way it ponders the answers, yeah, it's like yo, this is not this is scary. Yeah, this is scary. Yeah, you might like the movie Megan, uh, Saida. I didn't want to watch it. And then when I we were watching, he was watching, I was like, I'm not watching, but I was on my tablet. So of course the movie draws you in and he was like, and he tapped me. So I'm like, are you watching? No, I'm not watching. I'm not watching. Here we go, I'm staring at the TV going, no, I'm not watching. I'm watching. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so. Um, Friday, July 21st, which is today, there is nothing on this Forex calendar, which is amazing and shocking that nothing is here. Nada? We don't got nothing to talk about today. So let's go look at investing.com and see if they got something. Well, all they have for today is the oil rig stuff at one o'clock, which usually happens on Fridays. And 4.30, those speculative positions, which happens after the market closes. So I won't say there's no landmines, but uh, there may be no landmines. Uh, let me see. What did we have for earnings this morning? What what um who reported this morning? Let me see if we got a photo of some earnings. Mm, I don't see your earnings photo. Oh, maybe this is the one. This is this week. Yep. July 17th, this morning, American Express, SLB, Comerica, Huntington, Regions Bank, Auto Nation, Auto Live, IPG. Um, I don't can't see what this name is, but that symbol looks familiar. Um, but those are all the ones that reported this morning. Yesterday after market close was Capital One, CSX, PPG, Amarant, another bank right here. We've had oh, did anybody check in on Taiwan Semiconductors yesterday? I meant to check back with them. Key Bank. Key Bank is the one everybody talks about when you're trying to get business credit. It's one you keep seeing on the on people's uh, TikTok videos and their reels that they're saying you could, should go to one of the ones. Okay. We got all that. Let me go do Adam now. 
Adam says, yesterday, the first short set up in 1.5 weeks triggered as, oh, I'm changing this because I made this into SPX. I'm trying to be, you know, on the level of IT baby and make sure that I'm ready. Mm -mm. Trying to make sure that I won't be left behind. No leader left behind. <laughs> First set up 1.5 weeks triggered in SPX at 45.43. My target was 45.20, where I'm looking, I was looking for a bounce. And we hit 45.22. Bounce. Now it's back testing time. The plan for today, 45.37 is support. Back testing 45.50 to 55 is next. And a decision there. The bulls must clear in order to end the dip. The bulls have to get past 45.50 in order to keep going up. 45.37 is support. But those are our numbers for today. Proceed. Where are we here? Put it where it goes. Boop. Nope. It didn't pick up my numbers. It didn't pick up all the stuff I did. What are you doing? I need you to pick up the stuff I did. Go back here. I need to right click. And copy. Oh, now what are you doing? What happened there? Can y'all see this foolery happening on the screen? Okay, you can delete. Let's go back. Try again. Okay, I'm here. I'm right clicking and I want to copy. I'm going to go here and I want to paste. Ah, there we go. Thank you for acting right. I also put in here a little thing from um, Elite Options Trader. They have a plan for Friday. SPX failed to hold 45.52 and it dropped to 45.27. Something, same thing that Adam was just saying. If SPX breaks 4,500, it's possible we see another. 50 point drop into the FOMC SPX 4,500 put can work. 4,500 puts can work under 4,530. This is what he's saying. Um, 4,500 puts can work under 4,530. Now this is straight puts and calls or just puts in this case. Uh, buying a put for us will be the same thing as a call credit spread. So he's saying you can change this around, call credit spread under 4,530. Tesla, if it breaks 261, it can drop to two. What is it? Oh, drop. I was looking at uh, my numbers are switching. Drop to 249. 255 puts can work under 261. And NVIDIA can test 435 next week if it fails to hold 448. Puts can work under 448 over the next three to four days. Those are the three things that the elite options trader has put into his thingy. I wanted to talk about this. Um, these are the ones that, these are the, I said this was my rent and repeat list. Actually, these top three to five, these top ones here are the ones I've really been renting and repeating every week. These are all 50 cent spreads. Um, Carvana, if you go over the fifty point fifty dollar mark, it becomes a one spread. But everything underneath there is a fifty dollar spread. And then I've kind of tied these in the EOSC, SoFi, and beyond. I've tied them in. It kind of weaved them in and out depending on opportunity. Rasta asked yesterday, "What did I use as like to determine the strikes on these smaller ones or whatever?" I look at the chart to see if it's been going up or if it's kind of hanging out at a spot. Like um, Carvana had been going up. Palantir and Ravin had been going up. Mara had been going up. So I was just doing put credit spreads on these for a while. And then this week I did both. So in some of these, I would do, based on the charting, because look there first, I would do one side of the credit spread. Maybe if it's going up, I would do just put credit spreads. And then later in the week, as price, you know, we get closer to expiration, I would look at the call credit spread side of it. So I wouldn't necessarily put on the call credit spread side or whichever if price was moving into, I wouldn't put that on till later. AMC has really been in a in a channel. So um it's just been channeling. So this AMC I've been able to do as iron condors 
because it's just been in a channel. I do want to look today to see, I'm going to look on Robinhood to see like how do we add a put credit spread with some moat with some ability for it to go up. We probably could use the same one of those advanced strategies. I probably could use that because at some point AMC is probably going to squeeze going up and I would like to be ready to capture whatever move that includes. So I need to look to confirm which strategy I'd like to use for it staying above $354. Cause that's really the strike you I've been using over and over and over is like $350 and $4 on AMC because it's it seems to be staying above that number. Um, for cash secure puts, I've sold AMC, Open, Fubo, EOSE. And I put a list in the chat every weekend. I do put things in the chat. Just know when I took us through the strategy of looking at cash secure puts and where we pick on the thing to make sure it's actually going up, I, I do that look on all of these beforehand. What I'm talking about is on bar chart, when I go to bar chart to find, when I go to bar chart to find um, the stuff for the cash secure puts, I check inside of each of these to make sure that it's actually going up, right? So I'm going to do a quick look. I'm in bar chart. I'm looking at naked puts. They give us a list of the naked puts on the screener. Um, I usually put it in, you know, order from smallest to, to greatest. But let's say looking at Nicola. I click in here, this plus mark over here, and then I do the opinion. And if it says um, buy, if it says buy on any form, buy, week buy, as long as it's going to be going up, then I this would be a candidate for the list. Okay, that's a candidate for the list. VRM I already know is it's got a buy. But like some of these, this is a strong buy. These are the ones that end up on the cash secure put list. But for example, AMC, I don't believe AMC is on the buy list. I think it's just even, but I, I'm still using AMC because I've traded it enough weeks now. See, it says it's a strong sale, even though it's been in the same spot for you know a few months. So I ignore this on the bar chart for them, but like on the other ones, if it, if it says buy or something like that, then I'll put it on our list. If it doesn't say buy, I don't, all right? So you, you can know that if I put the list together, I've at least looked at, I've looked at that thing for us because as a cat selling a cash secure put, you do want the price to go up. Like this one is a strong sale. I wouldn't put this one on our list, SCLX, because I don't know anything about it, right? So I have to trust that this strong sale and the indicators are over here to the right. I have to trust that whatever they've done, it's that because I don't know anything about the stock. So I just take this at face value, strong sales. So Skelex or whoever they are do, do, won't go on the list of um, cash secure puts that I put together for, for us. I do the same thing in covered calls. I don't want to have a covered call. It can be flat for a covered call or it can be going up. I don't want to pick a strong sale for covered calls. Even though when you're doing covered calls, you do want the price to stay below your strike. You don't necessarily want it to go down. You just want it to stay below your strike. So you want it to be like a medium or going up so that if you do buy the shares, you want to have an asset, not something that you buy and it automatically, or it's, you know, I didn't know workhorse was a dollar and 22 cent. You don't want to have it set to go to go down down like you don't want a strong sale on cover calls and you end up with the shares and then it just fall like this one i wouldn't do tilray it's inexpensive as far as owning the shares but everybody over here says sell it strong sale again i don't follow it enough to know to say i can discount this information so i i take it at face value i wouldn't add tilray to our cover call list not for the way we do the strategy, which is to buy shares. If you want to do it this way, you buy shares and then cover call it. That's what we do. But I'd rather do that with something that's going up or at least, you know, kind of going to be trying to climb a bit. You know, that's my thought process with those. So these are the ones I have so far. The um, Cash Secure puts um, AMC, Open, Fubo, EOSE. I was doing Mara on my cash secure puts, but Mara has climbed into the 17s, the 17s dollars 
So that's $1,700 of collateral. And I don't want to put that kind of collateral on one trade. So I can do a few of these. AMC, you know, 3.5, that's $350. Open is about the same. I think it's $400. These are all in the same range. So for the one Mara trade for $1,700, I can do all four of these for almost the same amount of money. Okay. And then cover calls, I've got EOSC and fuel sale. I've had some shares. I actually think I may have um, an AMC over here too because I got assigned shares in Robinhood for AMC. So I need to add that to this list. I have AMC here as well in my Robinhood account that I'm covering on my calls. Okay. And each week, I pick something up, pick them on Monday, put them in, and they usually close on Wednesday. At the latest, they close on Thursday, but they generally close on Wednesday. Then I might look to get back in, which is what I did this week. I got back in on Carvana and Mara AMC. I got back in on some of these. Ravine has, is going to close today. <clears throat> okay. I covered Adam. I covered that. I wanted to go to, because we hadn't talked about this in a minute. I wanted to talk about our high probability watch list. <clears throat> Our high probability watch list. Our high IB. So Palantir is way up here. 94. Palantir's up pretty high. What is Palantir looking like on the chart? Folk be out here complaining about the garbage man. The garbage man won't pick nothing up that you didn't put in the trash can. Duh. <laughs> Why should they have to pick your trash up that you don't stack up next to the trash that you got all over the street? They won't pick it up. They shouldn't pick it up. All right, come on, fill in. There we go. This is Palantir. Let's see what they're doing. It's causing them to be in the 94s on the watch list. I mean, on the IV thing. They ran up right to that um, 19 resistance, hit it, boom, boom, came right back down. This is definitely a strong enough zone. So it's got an IV percentile of 94 over here. Y'all can see this. It's really, really high. <clears throat> Upstart, Beyond Meat is at 78. Snap. I wonder if these are high just because we're in earnings season. But these are some extraordinarily high numbers. Snap, fuel sale, Lyft, Ravine, Microsoft is up here at 64. Meta is up here. Humana, SoFi. SoFi hit the $10 market, dropped down again. It just can't push past $10. It's a strong resistance, too. That's where people are selling off. If they get to $10, I'm selling mine. That's what's happening. People get to $10 and then they sell it. Google is on the list at 50 something, 53. <clears throat> Roblox, Amazon is up here, 52. Intel, Disney. Um, is this first solar? FSLR? I think it's first solar. Or is it a bank? I hope that's not a bank. I think it's first solar. Yes, first solar. Starbucks, Rut, Airbnb, UPS, Z. Z is here. Z, Zoom? No, Zoom. Oh, that's Zillow. Z is Zillow. They're on the list. 40. Twilio or Twilio. I think it's Twilio. XRT. Which one is XRT? The spider for tech. What's a T stand for? Could be AMD, Johnson & Johnson. 
Are y'all there? Nobody? I have a question. Oh, go ahead. I was like, nobody's saying anything. Hi. So, um, the, with the um, IV, how does that correlate to us as sellers? Um, a higher, hi, higher, I the stocks with higher IV. That's um, basically um, this. It's a, it's more, more chance of um, uh, crazy swings. Is that is that yes, that one piece of it? But the high IV percentile also means there's higher premiums. So okay. we look at this, the ones on this list on the upper, you know, the ones above 30, because the, the thought is that um, when the IV percentile is high, that, you know, you get the premiums are going to be up. But as time passes, those the pre, the IV is going to draw in or it's going to shrink. And as the IV shrinks, your premium shrink, which as a seller, we do want the premiums to shrink. So we can get in when the IV is higher, when you've got, you know, inflated, if you want to call them that, premiums. And then as the IV shrinks, then our premiums shrink, and then we're basically in profit as that happens. This happens like generally when a stock is going to have earnings, they'll have a high IV and the next day after the earnings are reported, then the IV shrinks quickly and you have what's called IV crush. Now that happens quickly because of the, it was based on a binary event. Um, these here, uh, all these, you can see the little calendar things, all these little dots next to them also means that they all have earnings coming up. There's earnings, there's a call, there's some kind of announcement because we are back in earnings season. So that may be why, but that's the thing. You get you have high IV. Um, that gives you higher premiums. Your plan or your thought is that the IV will shrink it down. And as the IV shrinks, your premium shrinks, which puts you in profit. So you may take in more money, the IV shrinks, and you can get out because the premiums have decreased. Gotcha. Okay. Thank yep. you. So we look at the ones that are over 30. You're welcome, Anand. You, we, we, um, we look at the ones that are over 30 just to see if there's opportunities here for um, you know, some trades, for some credit spreads, which that's going to be my talk today at 2 o'clock live is um, why do credit spreads? It's something okay. along that line. Yep, yep, yep. That's what we're doing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We hadn't looked at this is a long list now, though. So for those of you who have the screener up and running and you're looking at this, then the, the list has got lots of choices. Lots and lots of choices are on the list today. Today, today. Okay. I feel like I've covered everything. Don't forget tomorrow, we're going to have, um, it is tomorrow. The days do seem like they're running together. We're going to have our SPX training for the Power Hour strategy plus the plus and minus 30 plus the PDT hack plus the 345 plus <laughs> the breakout. It's kind of all going to be in together. <laughs> but tomorrow we are starting at 10 o'clock. Y'all tell Jamie we're starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow, 10 a.m. So the Central Standard Time people, I know we got Miss Sandra and Jamie and may have one or two people with y'all going to be on at nine tomorrow, a little earlier, just because y'all just heard me say plus and plus and plus. It's going to be a lot, right? We'll all, we'll all be there. The, I'm, I've marketed it to the, the world. A few people have registered for it. So um, some people who will be on won't be just us. It'll be uses and hopefully some other people. Well, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Earl said Megan was a good movie. And hopefully it'll be us and some other people from the world and we'll be dragging them into our ecosystem. Come on in. Come on in the room. I'm excited for it, but um, I won't be able to probably watch the whole thing. I want to go back to it and watch because I got to work tomorrow. Ooh. But this is this is a I'm gonna be my eyes are glued to the screen when I watch it. <laughs> like what is she talking about? We we'll have it recorded for sure. I have the um I have the 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 SPX playbook uh -huh. for um 
how to make six figures in three months mm -hmm. using the SPX vertical spread. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. Once I get the uh, once I get everything done, I'm going to follow that compounding chart. Uh huh. And in three months from now, I will not be working. All right, you're definitely. Now I'm telling you, you it, it it's a ride. So you're gonna definitely have to um have your big boy pants on, cause uh, yeah. <laughs> cause it, it, once you it's get not to, for the faith of heart, a lot more contracts. It'll get even more scary than just one or two contracts. When you put in big bigger money on the line, it's even more scary. I'll be yelling for you, saying, "Hold my hand, hold my hand." <laughs> The community will assist. <laughs> <laughs> did I forget anything, anyone? I don't believe I did. I don't believe I did. But if I did, y'all let me know. We're going to have some some of our other traders in the group. Like for tomorrow, Saida's going to share her plus minus 30 and the 345. Saida's going to be on the microphone. Jamie's going to talk about the breakout with spreads in the morning. So Jamie will be back on the microphone and I will, you know, do what I do, but we're going to have a concerted effort tomorrow. Won't just be y'all listening to me the whole time. And yes, you're like, yes, anybody else, somebody else, come on. <laughs> All right, here's our E2T daily declaration. I declare I'm a great trader. I declare I am a successful trader. I declare I am a focused trader. I declare my wins exceed my losses. My account is growing more and more each week. I am a wise and knowledgeable trader. I always make smart and lucrative decisions for my portfolios. I declare that I am a level-headed trader who does not trade my emotions. I declare money likes me. I declare I'm a blessing to others. And I declare I am a world changer. Lord, it is you who gives us the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18, you teach our hands to war with the purpose of establishing your kingdom. 2 Samuel 22.35, help us today to trade wisely and strategically in order to fulfill this purpose. Give us more than enough so we can have what we need and enough to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All righty, so... We off to a good start this morning. We don't have, according to what's on the calendar, the landmines, but it is still Friday. Y'all know how Fridays work out. Mm -mm -mm. So do what's working for you, right? Do what fits your life, all of that. And I'm going to suggest that you do two things. You stay green. And get this money. And you get this money. Yes, ma'am. All righty. I'll see y'all at two o'clock. And don't forget power hour. See y'all later and get this I'm money. Talk to you out. later. Bye-bye, wow. everyone. Thanks, Arlissa. Y'all have a great day. Have a great day, everybody. Real quick, I just wanted to come on. This is Arlissa, Educator to Trader. Wanted to come on and tell you and ask you, I guess, to like and subscribe to the channel. If you like the content that um, I create and I'm you know, posting regularly, then go ahead and subscribe. That way you won't miss anything and you can be a part of all that we're doing here. Um, I'm a coach to sellers. I'm an option sellers coach. Um, if that's a vein that you don't know anything about or you want to know more about, then go ahead, subscribe and check us out all the time. All right. Thank y'all. I appreciate it.